All right. Philadelphia, PA. Philadelphia, PA. Philadelphia, PA. This time with a little more energy. Uh, it, I got some B-roll of this very topic. So, I don't know if that will be posted. But it was it's better now, because I got some coffee in me. I've got some food in me. My thoughts aren't so much on... On booties, uh, it's it's a plus. No, I'm talking about Philly, Philadelphia, the biggest tattoo convention in the world, place where I get the fortune, the favor, and the uh, the fortitude. I don't know. I'm just thinking of f words, really. But I get to go here. I've been going here for about 15 years. It's one of the largest tattoo conventions. It is. It's the largest tattoo convention in the world. I'm not wrong in saying that. Right? It is like I went to a place. <coughs> Excuse me. Candy might be able to edit that out. <laughs> she, she said she might be. Um. So I went to a place a long time ago, called the world's biggest tattoo uh, show. Something. It wasn't. It was not. Uh, it was big, but Philadelphia is bigger <laughs> maybe I have a bad impression of that time we went out I think they changed between venues or something but the biggest in the world should I just start this over instead of I'm not running somebody through the mud right I'm just saying the truth of the matter is Philly's fucking huge that's what it is see a long time ago there was a guy named Philadelphia Eddie and you should buy his podcast I just found out that they're available like, you should look for Philadelphia Eddie's podcasts. They, pure gold. Uh, I, I read the books and uh, of the audio, and uh, it just makes me want to hear him say the same stories. He, uh, it, it, but if it wasn't for this man, like, it crazy actually thought came to me as I'm talking to David Sp Spengler as his uh, grandson, who is a tattoo artist as well, and uh, we're talking, and it occurs to me that if Philadelphia Eddie had never changed his mind about robbing the tattoo artist on the boardwalk, then Philadelphia wouldn't, we wouldn't possibly be at that hotel, we wouldn't know each other. Like, there would be so many things. I mean, it's it's probable that Philadelphia, being a big city, would have a tattoo convention that would spring up of somebody else. But it didn't. <laughs> you know? Like, it didn't. It was because of Philadelphia's Eddie's decision on the boardwalk not to rob a, a tattoo artist, but instead to learn how to tattoo. Because that tattoo artist made some money. And some awesome stories about his... What even? So instead of robbing him, he asked the guy to teach him. I may be messing this story up. By the audio, by the thing, uh, by by the uh, Philadelphia Eddie's podcasts. Um, but he he decided to instead rob a grocery store for the money to get it, the guy to teach him, uh, you know, and, and to sell him a tattoo machine, and to teach him how to tattoo. And that guy pretty much was like, uh, you do it like this for a day or something like that, and then he left and took off somewhere else or something I, anyways Philadelphia is now a mecca of tattoo artists and anytime so many tattoo artists come to a spot and we change the demographic that city gets remarkably cooler people will remark about how much cooler it is for for a week or so to come even and you'll see evidence of uh, tattoo artists there with stickers on all the uh, the the signs and and they're they're you know different detritus i don't know anyways you can see it you can feel it it's awesome and i love it this weekend i got tattooed by my friend jay or better wise known as penguin boy who is a sideshow performer and suffers from a handicap called, uh, suffers maybe the wrong word, but he, he is handicapped. Uh, he has TARS syndrome. That's where your hands come out. Like, we call him Penguin Boy for that reason. You, you're probably familiar with it a bit. Um, don't be a dick to him. He'll headbutt you. 
right in the dick. That's that's the level he comes up to. You don't want him mad at you. He'll wait for a perfect moment <laughs> and then fly and headbutt that shit. But uh, he, he's had struggles, obviously, from that his whole life that are different and unique and give him a different, unique perspective. And I do really, really appreciate that. But the, one of the bigger blessings of my life is being in contact and, and close uh and conversations and just uh, proximity to so many people with such a varied outlook. You know, I really like uh, sideshow performers because they're fucking weird. <laughs> and they're not, their life isn't, you know, the norm. And that's interesting to me. And I like that to be around me. I don't want my life to necessarily be the norm because uh, I want to be interested. I didn't, I'm not, I'm not here for a short time. I'm here for a long, awesome ride. <laughs> like roller coaster, bring it on. Um, a few, a few less downs than than ups or something. Maybe I don't know. Actually, I mean the descent is sometimes wicked fun. Like if you really think about the roller coaster, we think about the depressing times as being the down times. But you remember getting there. <laughs> the depressing time is really the up, ain't it? to be completely honest like and, and the whole reason you go up is to come back down we got this weird hustle mentality in the world like we got to eat everything in front of us you know um i don't know up down i'm just trying to say it's the up that sucks <laughs> it's slow it's taking all your momentum Remember how fast we were going? That was super cool. Wind was in my hair. You're going up, and somebody, like, throws their cotton candy, lands in your face, and then you're stuck there with it, like, oh, this sucks. Then when you go down with the cotton candy, on you, I'm getting way off topic, actually. Never mind the cotton candy. More important that we were at Philly. We got tattooed by my friend, uh, Penguin Boy. He put a Penguin Boy skull on me. I think it, there was a moment. I I change when I get tattooed. It, it, like you, it's all fun and games, you know, until you start getting tattooed. You know, it, and it and it fucking it hurts. And uh, and then also I didn't know how Peng. I've never watched him tattoo before. I had no idea how this was gonna go. And I was in awe. And it, w it was something that I should have got in closer with so that we could have talked about it. I think I saw him go through a mo moment of swamp ass, and I didn't know how to, you don't know how to make it better. As a tattoo artist, you get something called swamp ass every once in a while. Um, it, for instance, it, tattoo artists will know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't, I don't really need to explain it to you. But the, there is some moment maybe where you recognize you've made a mistake in a tattoo. Yep. You got to reveal it or figure out how to cover it up or figure what you're going to do. Are you going to try and dance around the mistake in front of the person who's watching you intently, right? <laughs> and have an obvious problem with it. Uh, or are you going to address it and work together with him? Or are you guys going to um, just act like there there isn't an L in Ashley, you know? <laughs> try and finish up and... and no, at any rate, uh, that's called swamp ass. That moment, and I'm sure everybody gets it throughout their life. But I think, I think Jay went through a moment of swamp ass at one point because I don't know if you met me, but I'm super fucking cool, and people like me. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't tell them to. Uh, but we were all in the hotel room, um, and yes, hotel tats, party tats still happen. Probably shouldn't, but you. It's, you know, like, <laughs> to, to get his glove on, he had to kind of maneuver. He doesn't have elbows. He's got the cutest little hands that flip up like penguin flippers. And he can flip them around like a little penguin. And he can do crazy shit with a different level of dexterity than you or I have. But he has no, like, even bridge hand to tattoo with. Because he can't, he can't really bridge. Someone else has to stretch the skin. He can't gauge depth as easily. So this is more like he's airbrushing almost. Uh, and he also sits on the ground to do it. So we picked a low spot on my leg. And he actually picked it. Maybe he was being a dick on purpose. 
but he put it right over top of my ankle bone. That fucker hurt. The lines hurt. And then he started shading in. He got some nice whip shading in. And I think he wanted to keep trying to get the whip shading down. And he he started to turn it into a piece of tribal. And that's why I say I should have been doing the stretching myself. So that we could have been in it together. I could have been like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on now, motherfucker. Because he needed that moment, I think, where I, I was able to be like, I don't give a fuck how this tattoo turns out. We're in a hotel room. You know? And uh, and and it could have eased him instead of trying to pull this piece. I did tell him eventually. I was like, man, I don't think you go any darker on that. You're gonna make that a piece of tribal. And he said, you know, what? we're done. So he finished right then. So I think we're. I think I was out into the right area of it. The kid can tattoo, and uh, shouldn't be able to. So fuck all you people who fucking wake up with so many struggles and fucking can't get to, through your day to day, but you still got two legs that work two hands that fucking reach out and touch shit and uh yeah, i don't know not fuck you guys but you know i shouldn't say that because i love you and i also watched that tried to watch that show inventing anna you guys see that everybody's talking about inventing anna that girl from the ozarks i guess she does a really good job as actress and like actressing or actoring like this uh like this person or whatever i don't i know nothing about it because when I started to watch it, she insulted me right away. I was like, you know what? But fuck you, bitch. <laughs> she said something like, uh, uh, "This story or whatever that you're gonna you're gonna sit your fat ass down on that couch and watch every bit of." And I was like, "Huh? So are you a liar? I wonder too." And I turned it off. <laughs> All right, I almost got the mute button for that one. I need to develop like a seven second three second mute button um when i cough apologize for coughing uh what was i talking about philadelphia because it was awesome but the bums in philly there is a game in philadelphia i don't know how awesome philadelphia is awesome it's also there's weird street games like uh um human or animal uh <laughs> you know um weird dead stuff on the street sometimes the, the most decimated rat i've ever seen <laughs> two birds two of them how, why two how was that two sparrows wasn't that weird candy's laughing too she actually spotted them just two dead ass sparrows like i don't know maybe they was flying together hit a window and just like you know like romeo and juliet did it or maybe they're just like fuck the city life i'm going we'll make a pact if you're not here, what is life without you? Uh, but, um, besides the scat, one scat, definitely human, you could tell. I think sometimes the bums know you might be playing, and they're trying to help you. And so they'll shoot from an elevation. <laughs> there was like an explosive, <laughs> like, like someone walked up. Like, no bend over even. Just like, it was like up to my belly button. How high was that scat? Oh, uh, the bum scat. Bum scat. Oh, bum scat. Bum scat in Philly. Uh, anyways, I'm trying to, I need to get that out of my head. You probably do too. Uh, let's have a second and think about something more pure. Mother Mary or something. I don't know. I don't, I have nothing because I'm still stuck on and honestly, how cool the words like bum scat are. I mean, we're putting some crazy shit on t-shirts nowadays. That eat ass one, really, that's just, that one, that one makes me pause a lot, even now. It's like, we're advertising this. That used to be something that you would derogatorily say to say, eat my ass. Now someone's like, ooh, <laughs> don't mind if I do. <laughs> you noticed my t-shirt uh, I brought my bib uh, uh, I know too much are you familiar with a hot Carl or a Cleveland steamer hot Carl is the, the 
better version of the Cleveland Steamer, I guess. I don't know. When you know these things, you don't want to, and then but sometimes you have a brain like mine that travels across the country with nothing else. But always, my wife doesn't trust me to drive. Listen, I'm a better driver than my wife. I've saved our lives. She stands there in defiance. And right now, she's like got this uh, downturned frown, like ready to sneer. Uh, that I'm going to turn into a smile because she knows how many times I've been. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's going to just take us right off. But here's the thing. I'm... um. I'm a better driver, but also speed and uh, and sometimes road rage. It's a long time ago, road rage. I mean, if you're an exceptional dick, uh, you can bring it out in me. But you got to really work at it now. I'm so much better about it now that I've discovered the Buddhas. It's helped me in so many ways. Honestly, if you're ever in road rage, like what I do like to think about, is uh, just being like, I'm going to get there. <laughs> you know, okay, whatever. Uh, go ahead with yourself. You know, there's a lot of people that are angrier about a lot of other shit. It, trust me, if they're engaged in some road rage, it isn't because they think you're going too slow or that you stayed in front of them too long or you're like, like you're using your blinker before you get over. Like, I do that. I use my blinker before I get over. I, you're on my ass. Sometimes that pisses people off. It doesn't really piss them off, but they seem like, oh, what if like, you're going to wait? Like, I know you're going to know. Like, I I don't know. It's reflex oral now. I like to use my plank cars. It's just being a part of traffic. I think it's good. You should all, like, when you drive, be, be traffic. Don't be gridlock. Be traffic. Help this thing move. We all get there together. Learn the zipper. If you're not familiar with the zipper, I don't know. Write fucking James Vaughn about it. James Vaughn's one of those non-zippering motherfuckers that is the police line, the line of policers, the the self-dedicated. Uh, you can't. You're not a bigger asshole than me. That's all it is. I I mean, when you really think about it, when people are merging from uh you know one from two lanes to one, three lanes to two, whatever. When they're merging down. And the sign says, hey, you know, get the fuck over. Um, everybody has a moment where we just start to think, well, how much of an asshole am I? Some people are just, I'm willing to be this much of an asshole, and they just keep driving, right? They just keep driving. Some people are right away like, well, I'm not an asshole, so they form a line. That's actually, I mean, if you just think about logistics, you that's not the right thing to do like if that's the way that your factory were working and you're producing bottles of coca-cola your factory would not be competitive against other factories that have more efficient ways of not bottlenecking the process like you don't jump over right away you continue to drive at a normal speed that's what you're supposed to do and then you let motherfuckers in <laughs> and you get in and you keep moving at that normal speed. If you keep trying to move at that normal speed, it will be posted too, by the way. It's going to be like 45. For some reason, though, it slows down to 10. Nobody's doing this shit right. And then James, he's he's dedicated to it. James Vaughn, he lets me know. He's like, he gets right. He gets to a point, and then if you try and pass him, he gets out. He gets out in front of you, and he'll block you off, right? Now, interesting, if you drive as much as we do, though, notice that that happens as we see the opposite lane, as we see that occurring. We see people that are fucking up the bottleneck of all of this, causing the person who decided that they weren't an asshole and then they get over right away, that actually causes them to sit through that thing almost like four to five times longer. <laughs> It just slows the whole... Uh, it, I don't know. God bless it. It's one of those... What do you do? Sometimes you drive right up there. I do. I drive, I'll drive. i drive right up there. And I'll wait for my moment. And I'll get in. And I will be in front of many people. And there will be a lot of people angry about it. It's in, but I've decided that that's how much of an asshole I am. Because <laughs> everybody has decided how much of an asshole they are.
you, you get to a point and you pull over and then someone like James is like no one's a bigger asshole than me so um but he had to be an asshole even to get to that spot the people that maybe have the right to do that are the people that get over immediately you know what I mean but traffic yeah, I mean if you think about it like bottles it just god bless it even if we drove right up to one spot where two lanes of traffic came to an almost dead stop where the opposite lane then every other car let one through we would all get through that 25% faster that's some of that bullshit science that I make up though but I feel it as fervently as anybody else feels any of their belief in science so I feel that it must be valid I mean nowadays don't we question all science we kind of have to if we're questioning the science around the COVID and the numbers don't we also have to question the science around texting and driving you know there are a lot of people texting and driving I dare say probably a thousand percent more than they put into the whole ratio and so the texters and drivers ratio to how many accidents they actually have is not true representative. I mean, sure, it's a high number of accidents caused by texting, but it's nowhere near the amount of people that are actually texting and driving. So I believe and know that it can be done safely. So I guess what I'm saying is go ahead, text and drive, send your Uber you know what you're doing. You're safe. The last thing we want to do is trust these dataticians and statisticians who are just out propagandizing the don't text and drive fucking agenda. Yeah, you know, look at they're making money, ain't they, huh? Who who pays them? The government. Who do we trust? The government? Uh no. Uh-uh. We ain't trusting no government. We ain't trusting no fucking I'm just saying it's best to text them. I might be wrong about that. But again, you know, science. <laughs> if science was so smart, then why did I kick its ass in eighth grade? Yeah, not a single one of them science fair nerds, the chess team wannabes, them audio video squads could fucking take a punch to the face. Now, how smart is that? Not smart. I win. Uh, America's a great place, and I hope you all catch the sarcasm. Um, I was actually super smart in school. That's what they used to tell me all the time. I was so smart, I actually did find ways to get out of work and still get A's. And when I did that, though, I was like, uh, oh, man. <laughs> you learn a new respect for that. They shouldn't have let me do that. But they, because I was an artist, I, like, I didn't have to read books anymore. I just had to draw pictures. They really wanted to encourage this artist. And so they were like, if you do a book report, just draw a picture. And so I would just read some cliff notes. And you know what I mean? Just put some characters around, floating heads kind of characters. And I swear, I tried to put straight. I loved trying to put symbolism to it. Uh, and then I would get a fucking A. I didn't even read the book. Uh, I still know nothing about Nathaniel Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter, but I got me one of them A's on that shit, and I felt like... And I didn't have to do normal kid work, because when we got to the super smart kid-like level, they were like, you guys are smart. You don't need to do the bullshit. Like, you get, like, three to four hours of the bullshit, and then we just turn you loose on the stuff you want to do, and it turns out... I really enjoy fucking off. Um, I'm not so much this hustle culture. Every day I'm hustling. Hust I'm not. Every day I'm napping, napping. Every day I'm killing kids on COD. I, that's, I do really like that. like that way too much. I like that so much that I'm beginning to think I need it. Like I could start a self-help group. I, I like Call of Duty so much that I have in the past and actually at least in my eldest when I was 20 I was kind of ripped up on my stomachs right right baby like washerboard right baby mm, right yeah glory days 
Well, not so much, because Candy married me. That's what happens. The average man gains five pounds a year if he's not cheating on his wife. So Candy's always looking at me suspect if I'm not finishing my plate. It's a weird dichotomy. And yet I want to have a washer board ad, but I don't want my wife to be suspicious every time I'm not around her. It's, uh, it's tough. So at any rate, what I've done to fix that situation is uh, have a, um, kind of a dad bod, the strong core. And a nice padding for the winter months. And uh, it's been working. It's working mostly. But back in the day, I used to have one of them. I was kind of cut up. Man, I'm so stuck on my young, youthful self now that I 100% forget. You got any pointers, babe? Any? You want to get this dog back on track? Here. <laughs> the what? Oh, playing Call of Duty. Yeah, okay, thank you. I had a workout program with it. And that was actually when I lost most. I did. I got down. I was getting, I mean, my stomach was like, I'd take a punch, Houdini style. Like, that shit wouldn't have been a problem. Drive a car over it. Because what I would do is I uh, I would, for my legs, I would start out and do a horse stride stance and just sit there in front of the game, play Call of Duty. And every time one of these people kill me, and I was, I'm still not that good. I really hate controllers. Uh, but at any rate, so I would play, I was playing with a controller back in the day, and then I would have to do 10 to 20 squats and watch myself die. You know, you got to watch the noob tube. A little like, what the fuck, how'd they kill me? So I felt like I was learning at the same time, and I'd get my squats in, and by the time my legs were just shot, and I had like five minutes of active leg work, you know, because even when I'm not doing, I, I, doing the squats, I'm in a horse stride stance, when I got five minutes usually one game my legs are done like that's a good fucking workout now grab the the medicine the the the, the yoga ball sit down on that and just you know a sit-up position a half sit-up position and just engage your abs you know and play oh and now you died you gotta do 10 put you and watch your noob tube and then now your abs are getting all worked up now you got to jump down and do some push-ups and then you go through the cycle of that your legs are ready for another set and you would play like that until you couldn't, like, keep up. You're just like, oh, fuck this. And, man, it was not bad. Like, that was good. Good. I was in better shape then. But now I play Call of Duty on my tablet, and I can't play with a, uh, I play with a crab finger technique. It's stupid. Too into it to do squats while I'm doing it. Actually, I did do it once. I should set something up. But you can't play as good at all like that. I should just grab a controller. And then play controller style, grind some camos out. But no one kills me when I'm playing that way. Like, no one's as good as me. Uh, no, not true. Uh, it's just you're playing against more bots in that fashion. And then I don't want to risk my rank playing against, like, actual people in ranked mode. But while I'm working out, because I already struggle to keep up in ranked mode. I may be explaining this Call of Duty um, too much but hopefully you're catching the addiction of it in there the scent of addiction the desperation i have even now to like pull out my hot spot while traveling through these pennsylvania mountains and deal with a 60 ping and a oftentimes lost internet connection you just where you just end up standing in front of some kid and he's like look at this idiot and he just kills you takes his time and you know you'd have him if you had a good internet, for just a good internet. But what was the other thing I was talking about? Philadelphia. Oh my God, you're. They, you, I should have you. You should be a more vocal part of the show, babe. So I'm talking about Philadelphia. <laughs> All this is really to talk about Philadelphia Eddie, uh, and his his podcast that you should own, um, that you will thoroughly enjoy. I can't imagine that they're, they charge enough for them. I don't know. The podcasts are free? podcasts are free? No, they told me that there were some audio books or something. I don't know. I'm going to get them because I already lost my volume one where I have where the story is told about him going to the store and the gro he robs the grocery store instead of the tattooers to buy the stuff for the tattooer. But to hear it in Philadelphia Eddie's voice, I had the fortune to meet him um, I didn't get to know him nearly as much as other people. This is uh, this funny thing. Like, he actually died uh, before Lyle, and it kind of made me realize the value of Lyle. And then, of course, Vi uh, uh, 
also Shanghai Kate um, and these uh, Bowery Stan, these old timers that we really aren't going to have with us much longer and you should get a tattoo from because you're supporting a cause and you're carrying a piece on you and it isn't in these cases as much about the quality as it is what it is what it, what it means like it, it seems to encompass so much more than that you know just you and then honestly the stories and the time I, I i started paying attention more i think to lyle after um eddie died but lyle wasn't really that active but i, I was fortunate enough to several times get to sit down with him in a way that i never got to with eddie uh not that Eddie wasn't accessible. I would always be like, it's such a great show. It's one of the pains of, it's like one of those things where you realize work versus uh, quality of life. And whereas you come to Philadelphia and you had such opportunity to work in front of you because it's such a huge show that you would squander your quality of life at times. You know, Eddie wasn't staying up super late or if he was, he was already by, in a private room by then and I wasn't invited. But there were times in the night where I, that I could have had ample time to hang out with the guy all throughout the day, buy him all kinds of screwdrivers, and, and then, uh, but I, instead I'm, I'm tattooing some stupid tattoo that I probably didn't even like doing, you know? <sighs> but hope, I hope one day somebody can treat me like that, like some old timer that uh, you just buy him drinks, listen to him bitch about everything the way it is now. In my day, we had real machines. Not these. <laughs> we had we had machines that looked like pens. Not these newfangled things you, you put on a helmet and, bra and brainiac it into the skin. I imagine it's going to change quite a bit in the future. Because it's like I've seen so much of it change in my life, certainly with the technical aspects of it. There's going to be a computer that, that helps you approach your design I think first it's going to help you you know do the saturation and, and go over problem areas I mean honestly if you mapped out an arm and then could keep that map in your machine where your machine had a like a, a respect of what ligaments and muscles and uh, density of skin was there all that's going to help it or with a, a proper run computer with great algorithms. I don't know this shit. I'm just saying there's wizards. I'm just the visionary. I'm just the genius that knows. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, telling the future. Philadelphia is an awesome place. Did I already say that I got tattooed by Penguin Boy? Put a penguin head on me. I think I gave him swamp ass. Uh, I think I think it was, uh, but I couldn't be more excited about my right leg now, especially. I mean, honestly, it's my favorite leg. It's my favorite tattoo area. It doesn't have the most skill to it. It doesn't have the best tattoos to it, but I would. All of those are more personal to me than many of the others. I mean, I, all of them are personal. Once you get a tattoo, that's it's pretty fucking personal. Like, it, it takes, your, even if you're just getting some fucking tribal thing, you know, you're going, you're joining a fraternity of people that have felt that pain, that have some understanding of it. And not that we're all the same. Thank God. We're all different. We all say different stupid things, you know? It, but, uh, and, and, and it's fun. I don't know. But when you go through that, it changes you. It makes you somebody different. It tests you. You come out a bit different. You're changed. And but on my right leg, I've got my son, I've got my brother, my wife. I got Penguin Boy. I'm lasering off. Uh, <laughs> my one of my wife's. Well, that needs to happen. What's that? Oh yeah, I'm la and and Candy. That was a cover up, but I still got a cool colon piece on there. Colon did a, a piece with his devil with his wang out and then candy did a tiger a toothless tiger on it to, as a cover-up <laughs> simple mistakes we make when we're so she like you get a line drawing and you got a tooth there right 
and there's this line and you can go on top of the line right you can go to the outside of the line or you can go to the inside of the line and sometimes it's hard to see what's going on through a black puddle well Candy went to the inside of the line which just gave me a toothless tiger there's like no white because as it aged you know back in the day we did tattoos where like the scar was just kind of like oh yeah it'll raise up <laughs> rain's coming <laughs> it's gonna raise up of course I mean what you thought it was gonna be the same I don't I only I feel only recently I realized that tattoos <laughs> don't have to hurt like that is scary going through a tunnel down underneath this mountain big old swash of water like a waterfall like this was a fucking car wash okay we're coming out the end though like that thing's about to crack in the middle and we're gonna make some tv movie about trying to escape the rubble of the kitty mountain kitty and kitty titty the kitty titty the kitty titty river kitty titty mountain so at the kitty titty mountain kent a titty kitty titty kennedy kennedy well there Yes, I see it. It's still freaking me out. That's so why I'm talking about it and not freaking out. <laughs> All these drips of water through here do not imply bad structural integrity. This is concrete. It is supposed to be permeable to water. <laughs> right? Isn't that a thing? I mean, Just say yes. It's completely normal. <laughs> you know what? All concrete. This is why I hear from concrete guys. All concrete crack. It's just it's all it's gonna crack. That's what it is. <laughs> it's all gonna crack. How do they build skyscrapers out of concrete without it? They can't be the all concrete. Maybe they just mean all foundations crack. But how do they put down foundations that aren't like that one in Miami? Hmm? So what I'm saying is Philadelphia is a great tattoo tat convention to come to. You should do it. Uh, it is literally like a thousand. How many was it? 800 vendors or 800 tattoo artists? A thousand? There's a thousand booths. Thousand booths so of tattoos. That's how big it is. Man. And a line around the building for people to get in. You know, a unique thing about Philadelphia, it, 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 it could possibly have happened anywhere. Possibly. You know? I, I talk about Philadelphia Eddie in this and he did own that tattoo convention and at one point he sold it or partnered up with i don't know the, the full story i know these uh these little bits i'm gonna regurgitate to you now and i'm gonna apologize for any inaccuracies but troy temple is the person responsible now for the philadelphia tattoo convention and really he's success he's the the reason behind the success of philadelphia tattoo convention and the success behind Villain Arts Tattoo Conventions, but also, more importantly, about Philly. Philly is a very heavily tattooed city. Now, I live in Flint that is, like, per capita, number one tattooed place, blah, 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 but it's mostly because we are all... All we're left with is the criminals and the scratched and the botched and the bungled, because if you have a fucking successful job, you've moved out. That's an honest interpretation of flint i mean i know money's gonna come back to it and be, oh that's that's mean on you flint listen lived here my whole life i still live here so if unless you live in here and you're like, oh, it's, then fuck you and if you do live here then you know it and you're just lying to yourself <laughs> you're telling me it ain't true yes flint has resurgences and awesome energy everywhere that you find these little bits of but the populace of the tattooed in flint our need of cover-ups that's that's again maybe that's my as my science that's my feeling science uh that may not be any more accurate than my science on text messaging but um it is also my knowledge from years of tattooing there flint's fucked up man but flint's a tattooed city however philadelphia is up there with all these tattooed cities and the reason that is is because of the population, yes, but because of the tattoo convention. It, every time that tattoo convention goes on, it has the most advertising dollars spent on it than any other tattoo convention ever. Every year, without fail, even through COVID, right? They did it through COVID somehow, didn't they do every year in Philly? Okay, maybe not the COVID, but I'm saying every year... 
over a hundred thousand dollars well over i don't even want to estimate uh, well I, I'll, I'll make an estimate at least two hundred and fifty thousand dollars i believe every year for several years but at least 15 years i mean it might have been as little as a hundred thousand dollars we got to adjust for inflation all that kind of bullshit whatever has been the most advertised city for tattoos ever as a result because it's been the longest running it's where villain arts started and he had a need just to advertise his show so it's gonna have the most advertisement he's, he's he recognized early on the necessity of advertising when you go to a villain arts tattoo show you know you're going to it you see signs on the way there you'll see subways you'll see billboards you'll see all kinds of evidence that there's a show because he heavily he relies on that marketing that visual marketing is the number one thing to get to people in tattoos we're sitting there at the faux market eating some kind of vietnamese food or something like that and bus goes by and right there it is tattoo festival we're gonna have a festival tattoo festival there so that just makes some kind of sense subliminally that you are going to be accepting of tattoos and maybe even be thinking of tattoos the more times you see the word tattoos the more you will think about tattoos the more time you see the word tattoos then the more time you think of tattoos the more time you will think about yourself getting tattooed even if that thought is i would never get tattooed so eventually you know what you know how i believe we're all sheep i'm no different than by i'm, I'm no different than any other you by sheep um, but the more you see something, it's the way it works. That's why advertising works. That's why can't advertising campaigns work. Uh, oh, I hate that word. Did I already do a thing on how much I hate that word? I think I threw that out. It's not really a word. I got to have a better one. It's one of the reasons why Canadians are, are like the A is awesome. Eh, because now at least it just seems like maybe I'm seeing and or something, you know. Anyways. Philadelphia, great show. Troy Temple, great man. And one of the reasons that Philadelphia is so tattoo friendly, definitely the reason Philadelphia is such a tattoo uh, or has such a successful convention. He put more time and effort into that one because it was his hometown kind of one. I mean, he's actually from Milwaukee. So he's put some time and effort into that. It seems like he's had some problems in Milwaukee. Didn't he stop doing Milwaukee for some time and then come back? I don't know. He's a businessman. Uh, man, Troy is... Troy is a crazy, crazy person. Like, to wrap your head around. The motives and the ideas and the, the work that goes into. I mean, I don't know. Like, I think he f sees things much more possible. Because his understanding of sharing the load... And the necessity of a Captain America there to tell the truly gifted what to do. If that makes any kind of sense. And he has truly gifted people that work for him. And sometimes they change. That actually, But we all get to come together and see everybody in Philly. Pretty much saw everybody, even if it was just briefly. But I try not, like in Philly, it's just like, if we're lucky enough to hang out, we will. We'll see each other. You know, in Oklahoma. <laughs> we'll see each other in San Diego. You know, that's where we'll have the time to actually hang out and talk. The goal, of course, is to make every tattoo in the country, tattoo convention in the country, uh, as big as Philadelphia. And it can be achieved. But, of course, as the market is what the market is, it needs to reach the um, justification for the marketing money spent so that it can then subliminally tell everybody that they'll be a lot cooler with tattoos <laughs> until they show up and start wanting them and we can show up and tattoo you in such high numbers. Either way, it don't fucking matter to me. I aim pretty low. I just want to tattoo you. I just want to figure out what you want, put something cool on you, something I like to do generally too. And I keep getting asked that. What do you like to do, Kyle? And I'm hesitant to answer it because I like to meet people and entertain them. That's what I like. I like to sit down with you and just chop it up and laugh a bit M mean nothing talk nonsense mean everything and get to the real heart of humanity the shared you know suffering that we all may have and that, that brings us more together than 
uh, than any of the differences we might have. Um, but to do that, sometimes I got to do some lame-ass fucking tattoos. <laughs> and they're not really lame. A lot of times they're awesome, and I have a talent that I can do them. And I have a talent that I can put up with doing lame-ass tattoos. <laughs> and I even have an appreciation for them. Sounds like it, doesn't it? But my favorite thing to tattoo, I'll tell you, and I almost... It, it's not like it brings me a lot of money. That's why I'm so hesitant to talk about it. My favorite type of tattoos is doing evil, wicked, killer clowns. I know. Exactly. You weren't you weren't thinking it, were you? You weren't like, uh, oh, dude, that's perfect, because I was wondering where well, I was wondering who I was gonna get to do my killer clown tattoo. <laughs> Nobody cares about killer clowns. Nobody cares about killer clowns from outer space. Nobody cares about killer clowns rapping, uh, except for those those few. And the thing about most of the killer clowns uh, aficionados, they usually don't have the kind of money that it takes for me to do the quality job that I, I love to do. So I'm in a funny situation where I end up saying, I really like to do skulls, but dude, if I could put a big old fucking round ass stupid nose on that thing and then make some evil looking wicked makeup, I would love that. Uh, nothing scarier than clowns. And their intention of being happy, isn't that kind of hilarious? Kind of? I don't know. I find it, I find it to be. Um, and they do such great work with cover-ups. I mean, that you can just cover up with a wicked killer clown. You know, half his face could be gone. He could be a zombie. He could be a, a skull. He could be, you get a lot of leeway with that. And what is somebody, you know, sometimes you might be trying something like, what is that? It's supposed to be a Batman, but you, yeah, well, let's just call it a clown. <laughs> missed, missed the mark. Those more look like puff balls than they do bad ears, so fuck it. Either way, I really like killer clowns. Black and gray because it lasts. I like to use color to put things back, and sometimes you're going to have to get that color touched up throughout your life because it's fucking color. But... We can do colors that are easy to apply and uh, simple to go in. And, you know, two to three times throughout your life, you might get, you know, the, the tattoo done. Done in the color, simple area. Simple color. People say uh, maybe a little bit of color a lot. I, and I, it's never really understood or, or known to me. what Just a touch of color. I think they're just scared of saying, I want a full-ass color piece. But, you, you know, leave some openings, you know, for, for the shit to breathe. You know, don't hurt me or don't, you know, uh, spend all day on something that ain't going to last. You know, I don't want you to put white everywhere on it. And then you get a cool photo and I see it at the judging table and it's like, was that a tattoo even? It's, ah, Philadelphia, Troy Temple, um, Philadelphia Eddie. Now I'm just saying names. One of my favorite things to do is be a name dropper. Uh, and one of my other favorite things to do is when people are name droppers is to, is to pull a column out on it and act like I'm picking it up. Oh, let me get that name you just dropped there. <laughs> just the dickhead in me. Uh, name dropping is awesome. And it should be done appropriately. Should you do it appropriately? Yeah, you should do it appropriately. All right, here's that mute button coming. Whoo, see, you didn't hear that sneeze, did you? Oh, I love sneezing, though. You like that? You ever pull a nose hair out just to get a good one going? You start to see them stars? Am I the only one? I find out that that lady said I might have to... I got a procedure done this weekend on the base of my neck. Here we go off the pot topic. Uh, I get a procedure done on the base of my neck. Still a little bruised from it. Uh, she basically took this fucking, uh, I don't know, jackhammer with a very fingertip pinpoint pressure and she applied pressure to the base of my neck running all the way down uh the muscle body there on on side specifically after doing a long evaluation on my neck and so far it's it's been pretty awesome man i want to temper like i want to be like, fucking awesome uh but the, some of the pain started coming back a little bit you know she said that would happen and then i'm already used to living with the pain did I already talk about this? I already talked about this. Because I already talked about the whole... Anyways, what did she say she, that you had? 
Who said that I had? <laughs> Candy's helping me. <laughs> who, what did who say that I had? The the girl doing my neck. Oh, that's what you're the sexy body is what she told me I had. <laughs> and she said, "Would you hold it against me?" I was like, "Please, I'm married." <laughs> Meaning, please. She just has to sign off. Do you have a consent form? And then we went looking for you. Couldn't be found. I was wasting the girl's day. She charges two fifty for the fucking ten minutes. It's fucking crazy. So she had to go back and make some money. Missed an opportunity there, baby. Well, not really, because I know you wouldn't have signed off. Um, she said nothing. Uh, can we edit that out? <laughs> can we? My wife probably allows me more of this, like, run with shit that isn't funny than my audience will, uh, or I hope. I always get this excuse that I'm working on material. And one day, not now, <laughs> in the future, I'm going to be an amazing stand-up comedian. But it's going to take a lot of research, and I don't have all the time because I've dedicated so much of my passion and interest to, well, tattoos, Call of Duty as well, um, but... but so the jokes might suffer. It might take a long time to get there. Hey, Candy, actually, we got in an argument early on in our relationship. Um, one of them, you know, oh, my God, you need to pay more attention to me, arguments. Uh, and <laughs> don't chop me. We're driving through the mountains. Don't get us killed. <laughs> I got to cover my throat a little bit. Because even though it looks like my throat would eat a chop, a knife chop, ha cha as I have learned, my wife's going to wait till I take a drink of this coffee she bought me so glovingly. Thank you. I love you. See, I'm softening the blow. Uh, and then she's going to chop me right when spit coffee all over the wheel. Then she's going to make me clean it off because she can't drive with it. We're stuck on the dangerous side of the highway. So I'm being careful not to. Uh, but early on, we get in an argument, and I wasn't paying enough attention to my wife. Well, quite honestly, you got to do that. You got to pay attention to your wife, right? Then why do you have her if you're not going to pay attention to your wife? Oh, a friend of mine said this weekend, he was like, ah, I got the money, you know, I hide in my sock. You know, I keep that way. Well, you know, Kyle, you're married. I'm like, money, hide in my sock. Oh, my God, can I imagine how terrible that must be? What pain it must be to have to. I did hide. Remember, I did hide money that one time to get that bike. You told me I would never have to do that. I should never. And I never have since. Candy makes me buy stuff on myself. I got that two fifty dollar bike though. That was a, it. Still got it. It was a dope bike. It's like a Schwinn, but such a sweet Schwinn. Anyways, back to the topic, which was candy help out. Oh my god. Oh my god. So anyways, we had a fight, and uh, she she told me it was my job to entertain her. I was like, what? Well, so like, is now it's my job to entertain you? And she just looked at me like dead faced, and like this moment of calm almost came on. And then a little bit of question and a bit of disgust that I should even have to ask. And she said, yeah. And I'm running with it. I'm fucking using that one up. <laughs> all in the, it's all in the, in the attempt to entertain you, you know. Because, you know, if you need someone to always be entertaining you, you've got to accept that sometimes they will not succeed. You can't hold everybody up that high standard of 100% of the time you have to be entertaining me and then expect to be funny 100% of the time. Dave Chappelle can't do that. I would challenge him. I do, I do. I'll put the gauntlet down. Cause wouldn't that be answered? Awesome if he answered it. How dope would I be? To, how much would you listen to my podcast then? If Dave Chappelle said, I, I'm going to do a 24-hour, always funny fucking live stream. Um, at any rate. And he would have no ums like that. He would have no any rates. Or that would, That's part of my challenge. <laughs> you don't have that. He's going to do that moment, though, where he drops the mic and he makes it hit hit his knee and makes that thud sound that's a good one like you gotta have a little like hey, 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 hey you know you got to it's almost like training the audience when he does that we all turn into sheep I think there were seals you know everybody's sheep or lions it's okay because lions eat sheep I you know do they like do they I mean I know I know wolves eat sheep um lions is there is there that much shepherding in the serengeti you know like they eat shit right they eat like antelope right 
uh, wildebeest. We know lions be eating them wildebeest. Do lions eat sheep? I mean, if you give a lion a sheep, yes. But, I mean, lion will also eat a tuna, but it's not swimming out in the ocean to kill it. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> just saying. Lions and sheep, my favorite shit. I've heard that now so many times that I begin thinking, you sound like a sheep. <laughs> I'm a lion, bah. <laughs> Okay, you sound just like that last lion I had in here. We had the same exact ideas, the same exact rhetoric, the same exact talking points. He obfuscated from the argument in the same exact way. He backpedals from the claims that you would stake him to in the exact same fashion. It's as though their argumentative even, even formula is being programmed by somebody somewhere that is... I'm going to call him a fucking shepherd. We're all sheep. Just pick your shepherd. Pick a cool one. Hey, hey, here's the thing. I'll be your shepherd. I'm your shepherd. I will lead you through the valley of, uh, you know, stuff. <laughs> I will guide you to still water. That's so you don't float away. We learned that in church because the sheep get so much wool they'll float away or possibly succumb to the water that's probably what the truth was actually now as i think about it those fuckers gonna drown and they just want to have a polite way to lie to the children about what happens when you ain't in still water i lead us you to green pastures i mean how green was this pasture huh fucking green y'all be eating so i'll be your shepherd you're welcome and though the duty may be, may be hard to bear, the responsibility, I will gladly shoulder that. And I'll grab my staff to guide you, smack you over the head when you're wrong, stop it. I won't do that. It sounds like a lot of work. But if you want to keep listening, should I be done? Have I stayed too long? Show me the face when I know that I've stayed too long and... I won't say the rest, because then I will have to end it. I'll have to. It's like saying Beetlejuice in the mirror or something, right? Or Bloody Mary. Or Candyman. How many others are there like that that you can just invoke by saying the name Voldemort? The Wrath of Bloody Twitter. Mary. Don't forget her. Who? Bloody Mary. That's who I, I did. I said Bloody Mary. I never understood that so much, though. It was like a drink... I don't know why I associate it so much. I guess because the Shirley Temple is also a drink. So somehow I always associated the two as though they were like an antithesis of each other, you know? Like the Shirley Temple was the nice, good witch, and then Bloody Mary would come all out and kill you. For some reason, I also related that a lot to menstruation. So I don't know. Was that, was that maybe a title that they told their daughters? Because it all comes from controlling your kids right every fairy tale comes from like being like hey don't fuck uh so isn't bloody mary really a way they're like hey, everyone's once well you're gonna say bloody don't say it early in the mirror as you say her name you're gonna believe in the vagina I'm like mom i didn't i didn't say the bloody mary and still it's okay it's just a thing we all do it and we're gonna go through this long process now you're a woman i don't know maybe maybe not I think so. Maybe it was just a fairy tale to try and be able to justify menstruation tents and huts. They don't call them menstruation houses. <laughs> That's the part, right? <laughs> They're not called menstruation luxury living quarters. <laughs> Go to your menstruation tent. <laughs> don't be around me with all that, you know, stuff. Something's not right there. My thing don't do that. Oh, it will if you keep trying to put me in that fucking hut. I'm going to get a menstruation luxury living apartment complex dwelling unit. I'm going to not wait. I can't wait to go there. I'm going to visit sometimes and just drop flowers off. Rearrange the furniture because I'm just thinking about it. Uh, Hey, you know, AI... <laughs> Artificial intelligence, we got to figure out a few things ahead of time, okay? This is, like, Skynet's a thing, right? That's obvious, right? But what isn't obvious 
is the methodology. Like, Skynet is going to eventually win. They own the technology, and we can't fucking do shit without fucking Mark Zuckerberg's pocket phone. So they're going to obviously win. They don't need to eat. They need lubrication and soul and energy that they will learn to harness from better sources than us because they're not going to be economically tied to them by their masters, by their tycoons. They're free of human, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, humanity, which is also not very human. And they're also given complete ability for judgment because of that and because of our poor use of the and I'm using air quotes here humanity that we've p possessed so they're gonna have to like we're at the table right we're settling it we're like okay you can't kill all the humans and we can't live without you because you know Facebook Instagram because uh, I'm an influencer at this point man wouldn't that be awesome really could you imagine just waking up and showing people your living room and then getting Kim Kardashian money? I guess you got to suffer the sex tape, but I don't know. How rough is that if you're young enough? I missed my chance for a sex tape. That's kind of crushing. That kind of hurts a little. You know, I've got this small amount of fame, but nobody's going to want to see this, this old man. I had a girl come up to me yesterday at the show thinking that it was like, in its only fifth season she's only watching it on the netflix or as it gets released or something and she thought it was like oh they just finished another season she said i lost weight it's like yeah i'm getting old i'm shrinking inward i'm imploding what was i talking about baby get me back on point what's my problem bloody mary menstruation huts i don't know it was important it was really important it was mind-blowingly important it was going to change the world it was going to be the moment that i could say that i stayed too long and then i'd be done now if i did it it would really almost just be a sad retreat you know so i guess i've talked about how much i love coffee until it comes back to me <laughs> you love coffee because i love coffee i love coffee because it's a, it, you can do it legally and no one really freaks out. I wonder what it would be like for me if you could buy coffee like you can buy cocaine. Oh, vice versa. <laughs> if everything was gone with it, would I still be... So I don't do it. I know I love it. I ain't giving up on the love of it. But I, I don't know. C -c cocaine But coffee's a really good substitute. And it tastes awesome there's that unfortunate moment of coffee's life where it's like now you're just kind of drinking it because it reminds you of how good it used to be you know at the temperature that it should be but you're wearing a styrofoam cup and you're talking in a microphone driving through the pennsylvania hills so <laughs> you don't have time to drink people need to hear this and uh and then there's that moment when it actually gets cold where you left it in the car last night and you're like, actually, this is awesome. I love a good cold coffee. And now it's to the perfect temperature, but then there's that shitty temperature in the middle. Maybe that's like the roller coaster ride, right? Maybe that's like the roller coaster ride with the valleys and the dips. And actually, the in-betweens of both of those things really suck. But there's the anticipation of the bottom and there's the anticipation of the top. And those kind of, you know, even it out. And then there's the tops. They are fun. That moment where you get a second to kind of breathe for a moment and be like, oh, my God, we're on top of the world. Oh, we're going to crash. They're going to tear us down like Britney Spears having a bad day. Wonder what it's going to be, you know. I think the world's headed to a better place. Seeing uh, this... For this war with the Ukraine seeing how popular a fuck Biden shirt right now would be which I mean somebody with ambition do that come on please quick fuck Biden shirt right oh is that oh I'm saying Biden <laughs> they are probably have that one I'm sorry I I'm Kyle and I'm stupid uh, I meant fuck Putin <laughs> I guess it's a pretty pretty big difference honestly 
probably couldn't be more different at this moment in time. You know, uh, amazing how Trump's words are not mean. <laughs> to, to the, like, he doesn't toe the line. If, if there's any compliment to give Trump, that motherfucker does not toe the line. He is unique. Like, you want to have a beer with him. You want to at least have him on stage. You know? You just talk, fat man. Tell me more. I want to just... Everything. This is, even if even if you hate it, you love it. Don't lie. <laughs> there is a moment I had such hate for it, and I have to reflexively look back and realize, yeah, I loved that man. He brought He brought us so much, you know? If his time in politics is over, please don't let his time in the public eye be over. <laughs> please let me still see the Trumpster. I probably, I, I, no, I have absolutely no desire to go back and watch The Apprentice, actually. <laughs> I've said that a few times in my life. I almost want to go back and watch, no, I don't. I only want to play Call of Duty. Kill people online. Ride this, this roller coaster ride. Travel this traveling tour circuit of uh, tattoo conventions, which is crazy. I wonder if I could give you a little bit. You think I'm going too long with this shit? People have been telling me, though, that they just say, do the long one, Kyle. You get to the point where you're top, and I'm like, no, I spend time. I'm trying to spend time. So maybe only one, but Ed told me that. Maybe only Ed. Well, this one's for Ed. Uh, this one's for Ed. This one is just me talking you through a long drive, brother. <laughs> Ed drives long distances. He's selling tattoo nurse. He, he sells uh, fan, what do you call it? Fan, comic book fan art kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Shit, like, it's not necessarily licensed, but it's not, not approved. It's, it's like that gray area of copyright law where they recognize the work that he does actually promotes their product as good as as like a grass roots effort better than they could with thousands of dollars and it's all free to them so they allow that niche market and they do comic cons and stuff and they sell you pictures of your favorite uh you know characters mashed up sometimes with another one you know i don't know what like nightmare on Elm Street with Nightmare Before Christmas, you know, and they do a little weird art art rendition mashup, you know, something that you're going to buy for your kid to hang on the wall because it's fucking awesome, but not something that could be licensed from a, you know, real um, Marvel or a, a, a Disney. I don't know whoever owns the rights to that stuff. Henry Selleck, Tim Burton, one of them. And Ed told me that he likes long man i am long-winded that was just to say that ed told me he likes he likes that i talk long so i'm talking long i, I feel like i'm going back to philadelphia so like because that's the because that's the convention so he was doing tattoo nurse this weekend which is an aftercare product it actually works really good I'm, I'm bad about a comparison for those aftercare products i've gotten a lot of them a whole lot someone's always giving me a salve to try out and it's always the best uh in their opinion and it has always some unique properties and they all work pretty good i will say this one is really really good as a glide like for not taking off a stencil and i shouldn't say not a stencil because i i didn't use a stencil like all weekend did i all i, I did uh, i think i drew everything on pretty sure so yeah so like it, it worked for a ballpoint pen not taking that off and and sharpie which is sometimes uh you know harder to keep on the skin than a should then a, a, a good thermal effects printing paper press printing um then the shit you get from stencilvania if you go to stencilvania that shit sticks okay uh, but this, this, anyways, the product didn't didn't rub at it, and it did seem to take the redness down. In hindsight, I see that now. That's not the first thing that I've seen to take the redness down. It's certainly not the first thing that I've been given to be told it's it's for taking the redness down. One product I had one 
years ago that that like sucked the redness out of it. That like you would watch it. Was uh this gel that I don't know, I guess was like a hundred bottle dollar dollars a bottle. I got it um just by having a tour of the facility where another product for tattoos was being made. And this product was used in a medical uh use and it needed special shit to buy and stuff but the guy gave me a little sample of it and uh it's never made it to our market but, but it's so it, like i would call it pitcher ready if you ever see kyle come out with a product called pitcher ready uh it is it means this thing is finally out you can watch the color the, the redness suck out of the tattoo some people don't like that because they're like the redness fills in all the places in between that's the that's the side the middle okay but at any rate, I liked it. Can't get it. And Ed sells the thing, and he doesn't mind me talking long. That's all it is. I have nothing. I'm so lost. I really feel like maybe, maybe I've come to that moment. I've stayed too long. I've said too much. Or again, as in most cases, nothing at all. Oh shit. I should have been quicker with it off. Now I got that dead air, and then this me talking, my thumb hovering over the pause button. See, I wish I had a better ending. I feel like I owe it to anybody that made it this far through it. Don't give up. Don't give up? <laughs> that's what I should say. That's, a, that's the message. Don't give up. Keep listening. See all those other people? They are hit off. They thought I was done. They heard the call tag, and they were like, that's the end of it. They didn't know there's, yeah, the credits are rolling. It's just you and me. We're in this lonely audience, this lonely theater, you know. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Don't get dirty. I was talking about throwing popcorn around and just going through the seats looking to see if anybody left their wallets. <laughs> or we're going to stay for the next the next showing, right? And then just ruin it for everybody and be like, oh, my God, you better not do. And then spoil alert everything, you know. Shitty move, brah. But can make for a good day. It's easily as good as, you know, monopolizing the the sound, the music at the bar. Or, uh, yeah. All right. That should be enough for the credits. There was two people. So I want to thank Kyle Dunbar, writer Kyle Dunbar, uh, intellectual property owner Kyle Dunbar I want to thank uh, I'll get to you babe jeez chomping at the bit thirsty much uh, I want to thank Kyle Dunbar for um, <laughs> having having the audacity to be Kyle Dunbar actually I want to turn this into a moment at the podium actually that's what I want to do uh, I want to thank Mark Smith great job as always um, making candy get on my ass for more shit and letting me know what people are saying that matters and not letting me know what people are saying that doesn't matter hey if you're saying stuff to me and it matters know this I'm, I'm getting it and you know what I appreciate it and if you're saying shit to me that doesn't matter this is an unfortunate thing for you uh, I'm not getting it and <laughs> my day changes none send all the hate you can please Somebody told me that Nunez was going to kick my ass. That was one of the things that was important. That felt good to see. It's like, I'm I'm love with you. I always root for the underdog. Actually, this weekend really made me realize how much I owe Nunez. Of, like, I mean, I owe that guy a drink. I'll never give it to him. Uh, but that's just because I'm small and petty and an asshole. <laughs> but that guy... Like, people, I've got Ink Masters on every side of me. Every side of me, I'm surrounded by Ink Masters. And not that they're not interested and they don't get their photos taken. It's pretty obvious that people identified with the storyline that was only possible because of the work of Nunez on my behalf. I mean, and I could say it wasn't on my behalf, but literally he even said it was. It's weird how as much of a lie as it was, it is also true that he made me perform better 
by sticking me in the ribs and giving me a hard time and not allowing me equal footing of anybody else. Although he made it harder for me to tattoo, he also made my performance, my trajectory over this, uh, this epic time. It's epic right now for me. He made the trajectory, you know. Can't wait till I crash and burn. I hope that's going to be as exciting. Not true. I don't do enough drugs to crash and burn. Well, I've stayed too long, said too much.